Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, let's talk some boxing. You're watching what you need. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I was listening to fight critics' questions he had with certain sanctioning bodies. He was talking about the WBC, and he mentioned that Canelo Alvarez, he has suddenly become ranked way above all the other middleweights in the WBC. That it seems as though these boxing organizations, they're very willy-nilly with respect to how they just suddenly rank certain fighters above other fighters in a given division. I have in front of you here the rankings for middleweight for the WBC. As you can see, you can go to the WBC website and check them out. The champion is Miga Koto. The interim champion is Gennady Golovkin. So he should be the mandatory to Miga Koto. But in the WBC, unless the WBC mandates that two fighters fight one another, a fighter can have what was called a voluntary defense. And Miga Koto had his voluntary already against Daniel Gill. However, Gennady Golovkin in this case, he stepped aside to allow Miguel Cotto to face Canelo Alvarez. Now, Canelo Alvarez has suddenly, at least in some people's minds, been ranked above all the other fighters. And the other fighters we're talking about here, he's ranked above some other title holders. The WBC silver champion in Toriano Johnson, you have the WBC international champion in Jorge Sebastian Highland from Argentina. And you have some other names here. Now what may have eluded fight critic is that when these boxing bodies consider a fighter, they don't just look at them from their recent fights, whether they have fought at middleweight or not. That's why Danny Garcia is ranked number two in the welterweight division by the WBC. And he's only had one fight so far at welterweight you look at the body of experience and what's important like I tried to explain in all my videos on boxing rankings I've done a whole series on it you can go check out my videos is you look at the level of opposition that this particular fighter may have had and this is the same this is the same case for Adrian Broner this is why he's getting a title shot okay you look at the level of opposition this fighters had whether they have won or lost of course, you're looking at the plus-minus ratio as well, and that makes a big difference. So with Saul Canelo Alvarez, he has faced the best in the world. He's faced Floyd Mayweather. He's faced Eris Landy Lara. He's faced Austin Trout, Shane Mosley, Alfredo Angulo, James Kirkland. These were all top 10 ranked fighters in his respective division. So you have to take the level of opposition into consideration, as well as the kind of wins he's had against them. Now, clearly... Jorge Sebastian Highland has not faced that level of opposition in his respective weight division. Neither has Toriano Johnson. Neither has Arif Magmadev. Neither has Ryota Murata. Neither has Michel Soro. Um, I don't even know if he's faced a world champion yet. Dominic Wade has faced a former world champion, but it's just one. Curtis Stevens, he's faced Triple G, you know. And I think you did a video on it, uh, Fight Critic, and, you know how many uh, world championship fights he's been in. Daniel Gill, who's ranked very low, he's had some pretty good competition. He's faced Triple G, you know, he's faced Miga Koto, but nowhere near the competition that Canelo Alvarez has faced. And also, he hasn't gotten wins over those guys. Canelo has gotten wins. And we can go down the list. They're ranked quite low down the list because of the level of opposition they've faced, also the number of fights and their plus-minus ratios, which you must take into consideration. I saw Canelo Alvarez... If you guys do remember, he fought at 155 against Eris Landy Lara, 155 against um, Alfredo Angulo. So he actually has fought at middleweight at catchweights before. So really and truly, Saul Canelo Alvarez deserves to be where he's at. But you must understand how sanctioning bodies work. All you need to do is go into the bylaws, go through how they rank opponents, how championship fights are arranged and what are the laws governing that now concerning the wbo again i'm going to go into their bylaws into their regulations so that you can understand what's going on so that you don't think that there's nepotism at hand now with respect to floyd mayweather and the wbo and why he was stripped of his title it's because it's explicit in their rules and i'm going to show you it right here section five defense of the title no wbo champion may hold titles in more than one weight division this is their law. 
Okay, this is why Floyd Mayweather Jr. was stripped of the WBO title. If a WBO champion wins a WBO championship in a higher or lower division, the WBO champion shall have 10 days to determine which weight division the WBO champion will retain. The other weight division will be declared vacant. So, this is not just for the WBO. This is for all titles. So, if they have a WBC world title at super welterweight and they have a WBO title at welterweight, they're not allowed to do that. That's just the way how their laws work. That's why Floyd Mayweather was stripped. Now, with respect to mandatories, each WBO champion shall defend his title at intervals no greater than nine months, counting from the date of acquisition, from the last compulsory defense, as the case may be, against the mandatory challenger as determined by the championship committee according to these regulations, unless a exception is made pursuant of these regulations. So what you have to understand is, basically, Timothy Bradley will have 12 months to face his mandatory, unless the WBO explicitly mandates it. And they go on a little bit more. They talk about the designation of the mandatory challenger. The championship committee shall, for good cause, designate the date at which the determination of the mandatory challenger shall be determined. So another thing you have to understand is if the committee does not mandate a date, you know the WBA did that with Benavides and DeRocco at the junior uh, welterweight level. The sanctioning body must mandate this fighter fight fighter B. So in the case of the WBA, Benavides, he fought Jorge Paez Jr. But that wasn't his mandatory. That was his voluntary. You see what I'm saying? But they mandated that he face his mandatory before the period of time that elapses for you to face your mandatory. And this is the case with uh, Timothy Bradley. Timothy Bradley, he has a certain amount of time to face his mandatory. The committee must mandate it. If, for instance, Saddam Ali, he says, okay, I want this fact with Timothy Bradley, and he, he puts it in writing, which is written somewhere here. A classified boxer, who's a mandatory, may request recognition as a mandatory challenger in writing to the WBO. So basically, if he puts in writing, if Saddam Ali puts in writing, I want to execute my right as a mandatory to face Timothy Bradley next, then in that case, he will get his shot first before Brandon Rios. But the fact that Brandon Rios versus Timothy Bradley has already been set in stone means that he hasn't written to the WBO, that is Saddam Ali or his team, or Golden Boy requesting this which means he's willing to go through the mandatory period of time and Timothy Bradley has how much 12 months 9 to 12 months a year basically to face his mandatory Saddam Ali that is providing Saddam Ali maintains his position as mandatory challenger shout out to fight critic great video as always you guys have a great one